Welcome to another video in the data migration playlist. So far in this playlist, I have explained the basic concepts of data migration, an overview of the data migration process, and then I started demonstrating how to migrate the different data objects to SCEP is for HANA using the data migration cockpit. So far, we have migrated the master data of GL accounts, cost centers and profit centers, business partners or customers and suppliers, and today I will show you how to migrate the material master data or the product master data to SAP s using the data migration cockpit. In order to get the full benefit from this video, you have to follow the data migration playlist from the beginning because of two reasons. First, I explain everything in a constructive manner as in all the topics on this channel. So there are things related to data migration that I already explained in the playlist and I'm not going to explain them again today. And second, there are some member exclusive videos related to data migration that can only be seen in the playlist. So be sure to follow the playlist. I'm going to leave you a link here. Now let's get started with our demo for the material master data migration to SAP S4HANA 2022 using the data migration cockpit. Here I have SAP Fury and I'm going to start our data migration project. To do this, I will open the application Migrate Your Data Migration Cockpit. I have already explained many things related to this application. If there are things you don't understand here, then you should check the playlist from the beginning. The project we have been using so far is this one, Migration Demo for AG00, and here we have 16 objects. So I will open this project, and now we are going to migrate the material master data in the data migration cockpit, this is called the product. So the migration object is called the product. Now, if I scroll down here, we have product here. In case you don't have the product in your migration project and you would like to add it, you can easily do so by clicking on settings. So we can do this to add any migration object to a project that we already created. Go to settings and then click on edit. And then here in the migration objects, you can find all the migration objects you have activated for your project. If you would like to activate any additional objects, you can select the object from here and then save. So this is how I added product to our migration project because it was not there before, but I added it before the demo to save that some time. Because after you add any object here, it will take some time from SAP to prepare the object to be used. So now, for example, I have added the CO cost rate and then I will click on save. So it's saying that there are some predecessor objects that we should maintain first. I can decide to ignore them. So I will click on do not add. And then if I go to the migration project, here you can see we have something called ready for processing. So these are all the objects that are ready to be processed. And then if you scroll down, there's something called not ready for processing. So these are the new objects that we just added and they are not ready for processing yet. So SAP added them alone below here. So I have added already the product. That's why we can have it here. We can see it here under the ready for processing. So here we have the product. So this is the material master data. And then we also have two predecessor objects. So let's check. So first we should maintain the CO proof center, which we already did, and the supplier, which we also already did in other videos in this playlist. And this is the beauty of having the playlist. We are doing everything in the right sequence in a constructive manner. So you should always check the playlist from the beginning. So here I have already maintained these two objects in other demos. Now we can proceed with the product. In the product, we will start with the first task, which is download template. And there is our Excel template for the product master data. First, we have the overview, which explains how to use the template, same as all the other migration objects. And then we have the field list, which explains the different sheets and the different fields included in this template. And this is very important to check because the material master data is very important and is very complicated. We have a lot of fields, and we use only the fields that we want to use based on our business requirements. So you would never maintain all the fields in this sheet, in this workbook. You would only maintain the fields that you want to use based on your business requirements. But you also need to be careful that the mapping of the fields here is different from the mapping of the fields in the MM01 transaction SAP GUI. To explain this more, now I will switch to SAP GUI and let's review together how to create a material quickly in the SAP transaction MM01. So let's go back. And there is SAP GUI and I will open the transaction MM01 to create the material master data. We also have MM02 to change and MM03 to display. So this is MM01. First, we have the material number. I'm not going to insert anything here. It will be assigned automatically by SAP once we save the material. Then we have the industry sector. Here I'm, I have selected mechanical engineering and this will show some industry specific fields if there are any that are available. 
So we have different industries available here. And for every industry, there can be some industry specific fields. And then we have the material type. This is a very important field in the material management configuration. And it also determines what are the fields that will be required, hidden or optional in the following screens. For the material types, there are some that are configured by standard by SCEP. For example, we have the raw material, which is ROH. We have the finished product, which is FERT. We have the trading product, which is HAWA, HAWA. So these are standard product types or material types defined by SCEP that you can find in your system. For the demo today, I'm going to create raw materials. So I will select ROH, raw materials, and then press enter. And here we have the different master data views for the materials. So first we have the basic data. Inside every view, we can have different fields. For example, in basic data, we can have the description, the weight, the dimensions, and other basic data. For sales, we have sales related data. Then we have purchasing for purchasing related data and so on. We will see this after we go inside the transaction. So for my material, I would like to maintain the basic data. This is mandatory because it includes the material description and some other mandatory fields. And I also, I don't want to maintain sales because this is a raw material I'm going to use in my production. I don't want to sell this material. So I'm not going to maintain the sales view, but I want to maintain the purchasing view because I'm going to buy these raw materials. So I will maintain purchasing. Normally for raw materials, we can also use MRB1, 2, and 3 if we use the material requirement planning. In my demo, I'm not going to use the material requirement planning at all, so I'm not going to maintain these views. Now let's go down. Here we have the general plant data storage 1 and 2. These are important views for any material that we will have in our plant and storage location, so I'm going to maintain them. Then we have warehouse management that we maintain if, if we use warehouse management. I am not, so I'm not going to maintain them. Same for quality management, I'm going to skip. And then we have accounting one and two and costing one and two. I'm definitely going to maintain these. They are related to financial accounting, so very important. And this is it. After I'm done, I can click on OK here. And then we insert the organizational entities related to the master data. So we have selected the plant data, purchasing data, and accounting data. And for this, we have to maintain a plant and a storage location. If we have selected, for example, sales organization data, then here we also need to insert a sales organization. But I did not select sales. This is why here we don't have to insert a sales organization, but we have to insert a plant and a storage location. And the plant will also determine the company code for the accounting data. So the plant I'm using is AG01. This is a plant that I configured for this demo. You can find all the configuration steps in the configuration manual that I share with the elite members. If you'd like to have access, I will leave you a link here and you can check. And also the same for the storage location. I'm using storage location 171B. Then click on OK. And here we start with the first view that we have selected, which is basic data one. So the description, let's say raw material 10. And then we have the base unit of measure. So let's say this one is in kilogram. And the material group, let's say 2000. And we don't have any other mandatory fields in the screen. Now let's switch to our migration template and see where these fields can be maintained. So here we have our Excel sheet and I would like to maintain the description first. So let's see if it is in basic data. Yes, and here we have it. So first we have the key or the product number, the basic data sheet. And this key is very important for SAB to be able to map the different details in the different sheets to the same material. This is not the material number. This is the same concept that we used in the business partner master data migration. So this key is only to be used for mapping inside the Excel sheet, but it's not the one that will be maintained in SAP for the material number. So here I'm maintaining three materials, one, two, and three. Then we have the product type. So this is the material type that we maintained in MM01 right now. So I am using ROH, raw material, and then I am not going to maintain anything for retail. Then here we have the description of the material. So I'm maintaining raw material two, three, and four. And the language key is EN. So this is the language key for the description of the material. And then we have the base unit of measure. So here I have kilogram piece and kilogram again. And we should also maintain the product group, which is the material group. So the product group is 2000, same as we maintained in SAP GUI. I'm going to share this Excel template with, with all the details in it in the Elite Documents Library. So you can check it if you have access. So this is it for the basic data. Now let's go back to SAP GUI and let's proceed to the next view. So once I press enter in SAP GUI, SAP will automatically switch to the next view that we selected. So enter and SAP automatically switch it to the purchasing view. 
Here we have the Bayesian unit of measure is kilogram. This is the same as the one we maintained in the basic data. It's the same field. We have the material group and we have different fields related to purchasing. I'm not going to maintain anything here. I'm going to just press enter to switch to the next view. And then we have the planned data storage one. I'm not going to maintain anything here either. So I'll press enter again. And here we have the plain data storage two. And here we have the profit center. This is a very important field for me because I have profit center accounting activated. So I'm going to maintain the profit center 1000. And then press enter to switch to the following field accounting. But before we, we proceed, let's go to our template and see where we can maintain the profit center. I don't know where the profit center is maintained in these sheets. So I will go to the field list sheet. And this is a sheet that has all the fields that are in this workbook and I will look for profit center. So here we have the profit center and it is maintained under plant data. So I'm going to switch to the plant data sheet. So right click here to show, to show all the sheets and then scroll to plant data. Okay, first we have the product number. Here I'm going to insert the same key that we inserted in the basic data. This is how SAB will be able to map whatever we inserted in the basic data sheet to whatever we insert here. So we had three product keys, one, two and three. I only want to extend one and two. I don't want to extend three. So this is my choice. For the product number three, I am only going to maintain the basic data, but I'm not going to extend to any other views. While for one and two, I want to extend. So I'm going, I'm going to maintain only one and two. And here the plant is AG01. One more thing before we proceed, I just remembered that I already did another test case using product number one and two. So if I try to use them again, this will give an error. So I'm going to use product number 10 and 20 and I will change the same in the basic data sheet. So here we have 10 and 20 and here I will go back to basic data. And again, I will make these 10, 20 and 30. This way I can avoid getting any errors. Now let's go back to plant data. So here is plant data and we have 10 and 20. So I'm not going to maintain anything related to MRB or and here we have the general data, let's see. So this is the general data and here we have the controlling area and the profit center. So I'm going to maintain both of them. Controlling area is AG00 and the profit center is 1000. Now let's see if we have anything else to maintain here. So this is the general data, quality management. I don't want to maintain anything for quality management or purchasing or international trade. So I don't want to maintain anything else in this sheet. I will go back to SAP GOI and continue with the master data maintenance. Here we have the accounting one view and this is one of my favorite views because I'm a financial accounting consultant and I have already explained a lot of things in this screen in other playlists. So first we have the valuation class. This is a mandatory field for the account determination for any movement that will happen to this material. So if we post any movements to the material, which will be reflected in a financial accounting entry, the GL accounts determined will be determined based on the valuation class. I have already explained all of this in another playlist and in a Udemy course that are available for free to everyone. So I will leave you a link here to the playlist and you can check it if you want to learn more about the material management account determination. For the valuation class of raw materials, I'm going to insert 3000. Then we have the valuation class for sales order stock. I have also explained this field in detail with a full demo on SAP s in another video. I'm not going to tell you which video it was. Let me know in the comments if you know in which video I explained the valuation class of sales order stock. Let's see if you are following the channel and the playlists. Then we have the material determination field. I'm not going to maintain anything for the valuation class of sales order stock because this is not related to my business requirements for now. I will leave it empty. And then we have the price determination. This is a very important field for material ledger. And here we have two options, either two, which is single multi-level, either three, which is single multi-level or two, which is transaction based. If we use three, then we can only use the price control S. This is why here it is dimmed and we cannot change it. If we want to use the price control V, moving average, then we need to change this to two. I've already explained everything related to standard costing and moving average costing in the product costing playlist also. So I'll leave you a link here to the product costing playlist and you can check it if you want to learn more. So now for this material, I'm going, I want to maintain moving average. So I'm going to change this to two, then enter. And then now I have the option to change the price control to V. So now this item is using the moving average pricing. Enter. Once I do so, I can insert the, the periodic unit price, which is the moving average price here. 
or I can leave this empty. And then when I'm doing the data migration of the stock balances, I can insert the value of the stock there. So I'm going to leave it empty for now and SAP is going to give me an, a warning message that I should maintain a moving average price. And I can decide to ignore this message. So as you see here, with price control V enter a moving average price. So I can insert a moving average price here or I can leave it empty and then I will insert the value when I do the stock migration. So here I'm going to press on enter again and then we have the accounting to view, enter. Then we have costing one, I'm not going to maintain anything here. And costing two, I'm not going to maintain anything here either. And then we can save the material. And this material was created with the number 1722. Now let's go to our migration template and maintain the rest of the fields. So here we have maintained already the, the profit center. Now I want to maintain the valuation class and I don't know in which sheet I can find the valuation class. So I will be going to switch to the field list again. And here I'm going to look for valuation class. Here is the valuation class under the valuation data. So now I'm going to switch the, to the valuation data sheet. Okay. And then here we insert the different details. So I have the product number 10 and 20. So these are the two products I'm maintaining. Valuation area is AG01, this is the plant. And then we have the price control determination. So for one of them, I'm maintaining two. For the other, I'm maintaining three. So one of them will be in standard cost and the other will be in moving average. And then we have the valuation class is 3000 for both of them and the currency is EUR. But this time I'm maintaining a value for both of them. So the one in moving average, I'm maintaining inventory price moving average of two. And the one in standard costing, I'm maintaining inventory price, standard price for three and the price unit is one. So this is the price per one unit. And this is it. These are all the fields I want to maintain in my migration template. Now I'm going to save this file. And let's go to SAP Fury and continue with our migration project. Here we have our product migration object and I will continue with the next step. So now we have done download template and we have maintained the template. The next step is to upload the file. So I will click on upload file, then click on upload and select the file from my device. So this is the file I want to upload, open. Now the file has been uploaded and it is being validated by SAP. We have to wait for the validation to be done. We can go back here, go to monitoring. And here we can see the status. So this one is scheduled, it is still in process and it will take up to two or three minutes depending on the size of data. So now we have to wait until this is done. I'm going to pause the video here and continue once this is ready. Now the file is validated and we can proceed with our project. So I will go back. And the next step is prepare. Prepare staging tables. And now we have to wait again for the preparation to be done. Now the preparation is done. We don't have any errors and we can proceed with our project. So I'll go back. And the next step is the mapping tasks. I'm going to confirm all of them quickly and then we can proceed. Now I have confirmed all the mapping values and we can proceed with our project. I have already shown how to do all this confirmation before. This is why I'm going faster this time. Now let's proceed with the next task, which is simulate. And this will simulate the migration of the product master data. Simulate all instances, start simulation. And then now we have to wait until the simulation is done. So I am going to pause the video here and continue when this is ready. Now the simulation is complete, but we have some errors. So let's check the messages. And here I will click on this error icon to see the errors. So the errors we have are unit of measure target value KG is not a valid ISO code, unit of measure PC is not a valid ISO code, and again KG is not a valid ISO code, which is strange because I did insert KG in SAP GUI and it accepted. So we need to fix this. Now if you check the long text of the error, so here it says you have mapped the unit of measure KG to an s target value KG, the entered value is not a valid unit of measure ISO code which means we need to change either the source sheet or the mapping. So this is a very good thing. We don't have to re-upload the file, we can just change the mapping. So let's go back to our project and I will go back to the mapping task. So here in the product, I will click here and go to mapping tasks. So I have confirmed all the mapping values automatically without modifying anything. Now I'm going to modify the mapping of ISO codes for units of measurement. So I will click here 
And here we have BC and kilogram. And as you see, the s target value is BC and kilogram also. So SAP is saying this gives an error, it's not accepted. So we need to check the available values. I will open this icon here and remove BC and just click on go. So now we need to check where, what should PC be called in SAP. So let's go here. So PC is the, commerci the commercial term. So we can search for PC. So PC commercial term, so this is PC here. PC is called PCE in SAP is for HANA target values. So this should be PCE. So I'm going to choose, uh, I did, I choose a wrong value, so PCE. So this will be the value and then I will confirm it. And for kilogram, let's see what should be the value. So for kilogram, so this time I'm going to filter directly by inserting kilogram in commercial. So kilogram should be, so kilogram here, commercial kg, ISO code is kgm. So this should be kgm. So I will select this one and confirm. Now I'm going to simulate again and let's see if we will get the error. So let's go back to the project. And in product, I will click again on simulate and start simulation. Now again, we have to wait for the simulation to be completed. So I'm going to pause the video here and continue when this is done. Now the simulation is done again and again we have other errors. So let's check what errors do we have. Click and show messages. And here if we scroll down or if we click on errors here. So these are the different errors we have. We have product already exists and enter industry sector for 10 and enter industry sector for 20. So I forgot to insert the industry sector which means now I have to go back to the upload template and fill this field. So let's switch back to our Excel sheet here. And the industry sector, as you see, can be seen in the header data in the basic data sheet. So now I will go to basic data. And here we have header data, industry sector. And I forgot to fill it. So now I have to fill it with M. M means mechanical engineering. So I'll fill all three of them with M. The second error is that this product with key 30, there is another product that has already been uploaded or migrated to the system with the same key. So now I need to use another key if I want to create this item. So I'm going to change from 30 to 21, for example. Now be very careful that you need to change this in all the different sheets where you maintain the product or you will get another error. So now I have maintained it here and I will go through the different sheets that we maintained and change it and then continue with the video. Now I have changed the product key from 30 to 21 on all the workbook. I can confirm this by going to find and replace, advanced in Excel. So this is find and replace advanced and here in options, I have selected find, find entire cells and here I'm, I'm going to search for 30, next, or find all. So we don't have any value, any cell that has the value 30 in the workbook, which means we should be fine. I have replaced all of them with 21. Now I'm going to save this sheet and in order to, pre to repair what we have done to fix the errors, now I have to upload the sheet again, I'll do the validation again, do the simulation again, everything. So I'm just going to skip forward until I do the validation again to save your time. Before I skip to the simulation step, I want to give you another reminder on this error. So now I have uploaded a file and then we found that we had some errors. I forgot to insert the industry sector. And then I updated the file and added the industry sector and re-uploaded the file again. Now when we do this, as you see here, after the validation, the validation is fine. So this is the file that we re-uploaded. The, valid the validation is okay, so we don't have any errors in the file, but the step of import file has failed. And if you check the show messages here, if you check the errors, it will tell you that cannot insert 10 into table because 10 has already been inserted and 20 has already been inserted. So SAP already has inserted these lines before with the same key, with the same product key. So now it cannot rewrite the same lines without taking your permission first. This is why we get this error, these errors. Now to skip them, we can go back to our migration project. And then here go manually to the upload file step again. So this is our file that we re-uploaded. And as you see here, it shows transfer data to staging table failed. If you check messages, it will show you the same errors that we just saw. So now 
go back to upload file and here I will select the file and then go to actions and click on transfer data to staging tables now when you do this SAP will ask you do you want to skip the lines that are duplicates or do you want to override them so replace duplicates with in instances from the new uh, file this is what I want to do I want to replace the existing instances with the new values because the new ones will have the industry sector so I want to replace them so I will click on replace and transfer data and then now SAP is going to overwrite the lines that had missing industry sector with the new lines that have the industry sector now let's go to monitoring and see what is happening there so I will go back and go to monitoring and as you see here we have import file scheduled so now again we have to wait until this is done now the step import file has been completed successfully and we don't have the errors now so now you understand how we can overwrite some of the records that we already have in the staging table now I'll go back to the project and continue with the steps until the simulation now the simulation is done and again we have more errors and since I have decided to show you all the errors that I face this video is going to be too long so I hope you like it so now I have faced other errors let's see what do we have here so we'll click on show messages and again click on errors so this time the error is product 30 already exists okay this one we already know we don't want it then we have number 10 not defined for material type raw material number 20 not defined for material type raw material and if we check the long text of this error every material type has a specific number range for external number assignment the material number you have entered does not lie within the number range so SAP has tried to use the key product number so the product key that we inserted in the excel sheet for mapping SAP has tried to use it as a material number so somewhere in our migration process we told SAP that we are using ex external number assignment external number assignment means that SAP is going to use the key as the material number but this is not what we want we want SAP to use internal number assignment so in order to change this we have to go to the mapping step and change something so let me show you this so from the long text of the error we can find the mapping tasks so if I click here this is exactly the same as the one that we access from the project here we have the different mapping tasks and if we go all the way down here we have product internal or external numbering so this is what we tell SAP whether we want to use internal numbering or external numbering so if I open this here we have the value 0, 402 and customizing is 401 so this is the value that we decided to use if I open this here and we see the available values so here we can either choose internal numbering 401 or external numbering 402 and I actually had it on 402 before I had it on external numbering this is why SAP tried to use the key the product key as the material number but now I have changed this to 401 and started another simulation I just wanted to show you how I solved this error so this is the error and this is how we solve it this is how we tell SAP that we want to use internal number assignment and that the product key we inserted in the excel sheet is only for mapping it's not the material number now let's go back to monitoring and see if the new simulation is done we finally have a good simulation run and we don't have any errors now so we can proceed with the last step which is the migration so I will go back here go to product and the last step is to migrate you are going to migrate the data this cannot be undone okay and now we have to wait again until this is done before we can proceed now the migration is complete and our materials have been created to see the material numbers we can go to the messages here and check the success messages and here if you go to the end we can see the different material numbers so we have message for source record 10 is 1723 20 is 1724 and 21 is 1725 now let's go back to SAP GUI and check one of these materials so for example I will check the one in the, in the middle 1724 so let's go here and the material is 1724 this is transaction MM03 to display the material master data I will go here and these are the different views that are maintained so we have basic data one we have accounting one accounting two and this is all that we have so if I open the details here we have the plant AG01 so first we have the basic data we have the unit of measure PC so we inserted the the value that we mapped is BCE but here in SAP GUI we can see it is PC the material group is coming from the product group 2000 and then if we go here to accounting 
we have the valuation class 3000 we have this the price determination it is 3 and we have the price control is s and the standard price is 3 so everything is going well as what we inserted in the excel template we don't have any other views because we did not maintain any fields there so for purchasing for example we did not maintain any purchasing specific fields so these fields are not available are not maintained here we can change the material later and add any other fields we want but this is what we have from our excel template and this is it now we have seen how we can create a material using the transaction code mm01 on sep GUI and then how we can use the data migration cockpit to migrate our product master data or the material master data and we have seen different errors through the process and how to solve all of them so we have seen an error when i forgot to insert the industry sector in the excel template we have seen the error and we have seen how to solve it and we have seen how we can overwrite some of the records that we, we already have in the staging table the second error we saw was for the unit of measure so we cannot just insert the unit of measure pc and the kilogram kg in the excel template but they have to be converted to iso codes so kg is kgm and pc is pce and we don't have to modify this in the excel template but we can maintain it in the value mapping step in the data migration cockpit and we have seen how we can do this you can also check all the configuration steps i had to do in order to configure the plant the storage location and everything else to be able to run this process in the configuration manual i share with the elite members of the channel you can check the channel membership in the link here if you are interested and also don't forget to check the other videos in the playlist i hope you found this video interesting and useful don't forget to share the video with your connections leave me your comments let me know if you have any questions or if you would like to add something to this video also don't forget to check the other videos on the channel and subscribe to the channel Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.